level 5, keep fighting around the desert until you get to 180 gold. Then head north of the desert and follow the coastline west until you reach the town of Garenham, like this guy at Breckenary said. Talk to everyone in the town and go to the shop and buy the copper sword. Then go to the tool shop and buy an herb. If you have the extra gold, it's not a bad idea to stock up on these either. You'll get more of a health increase than you will with the heal spell, and it saves you some magic points. Fight in this area around Garenham. You'll probably notice at this point that the weak ass enemies like the slimes will start running away from you like little bitches. You're starting to get stronger. At level 6, keep fighting in this area until you get 300 gold. Then head back up to Garenham to buy the chainmail. At this point, you don't really need to use the hurt spell anymore as your normal attacks are just about as powerful. When you get to level 7, you'll learn the sleep spell, which puts your enemies to sleep and essentially causes them to lose a turn or two during battle. It doesn't always work, but it certainly can come in handy when battling strong enemies. Continue fighting around Garenham until you reach 560 gold, then go back to Garenham and buy the hand axe. Then travel east and cross this bridge up here as opposed to walking through the poisonous swamp. Each step you take on this shit will drain two hit points away. Then travel north and then westward between these mountains where you'll eventually reach a set of stairs that lead underground to some lonely old man guarding a treasure chest. He'll tell you that you need to prove your bravery by providing him with a silver harp and he'll exchange that with the Staff of Rain. Now, this guy is one of the many innocent civilians that want you to kill the Dragon Lord and restore peace to the world. Why the hell doesn't he just give you the goddamn thing? Why do you need to prove anything to him? Bitter old fart. Anyway, head back to where you came from and head east to the village of Cole. Talk to everyone there and buy some wings from the tool shop. By using them, you can transport yourself back to Tantago Castle, saving you a long walk if you're far away. You can fight around Cole or back in the westward area near Garenham if you like. When you get to level 8, cross the bridge south of Garenham and fight in the nearby vicinity of it. The bridges are basically a border between sets of stronger enemies, so if you stick near the bridge, you won't be far from a safer area in case you're in danger. When you get to 800 gold, go to Garenham and buy the large shield. Go back across the bridge and keep fighting until you reach level 9. Now you'll learn the Radiance spell, which will increase light around you in a much larger radius than the torch. And since we just learned the spell, why don't we put it to use? First head south of where you crossed the bridge to level up recently. When you see these mountains, head east, being sure to avoid the poisonous marsh until you reach the mountain cave. Cast Radiant, head to the northeast, and take the herb from the treasure chest. Then go down this intersection and take the staircase down. Now on this floor, the herbs can be very useful, as the warlocks will prove to be pretty dangerous. Grab the gold from these two treasure chests, but be careful, this treasure chest may contain the death necklace, which is a cursed item. If you ever pick up one of the two cursed items, the other being the curse belt, do not equip it. You become cursed, which forbids you from entering Tentacle Castle, thus making it impossible to save. So if this happens, go to Brickenary and this old guy here will lift your curse. Now back to the mountain cave. After grabbing the gold, go to this northeast area and grab the fighter's ring on the left. And if you have room on your items list, which you should, get the torch on the right side too. Torches are obsolete now that you have Radiant, but you can always sell it or use it if you run out of magic points. As soon as you get the Fighter's Ring, equip it. It will increase your power and speed by 2 points each. Stick around inside the cave and level up. Just watch your hit points, especially when you're fighting the Warlocks. An interesting little trick here is to leave the cave and come back. When you go back to the second underground floor, all the treasure chests will respawn, so you can keep filling up on extra gold while you're leveling up. Keep in mind that you can't just go up to the first floor and go back down, you have to leave the cave completely in order to get this effect. When you get to level 10, you'll learn the spell Stop Spell. When you chant this spell, it'll prevent your enemy from using their spell, but it doesn't work every time. It really comes in handy when you're fighting enemies with powerful spells. When you get to 1000 gold, go to Garenham and buy the half plate. Continue leveling up in the cave, and when you get to 3000 gold, go to coal and buy the full plate. Now you're starting to load up on some kick-ass equipment. When you get to level 11 and you have 1500 gold, head south of coal and walk across the poisonous swamp. Yeah, it'll drain your health, but you gotta do it. Remember, John McClane walked across all that glass and die hard because he had to. What kind of dragon slayer would you be if you can't take a few bites of a shit sandwich every now and then? 
So I went to the swamp cave, cast Radiant, and head straight south and around to the staircase. Do not take any turns along the way. The princess is in this cave. Yeah, but she's being guarded by a badass creature and you're not strong enough to defeat it yet. After going up the stairs, you'll end up on the other side of the swamp cave. Now, this is kind of bizarre. You just went into a cave that went down so far that it actually went below the bottom of the ocean. Wouldn't that kind of air pressure kill you? Maybe it's a shallow end. Or it's a close end. I don't know. It's a fucking Nintendo game, so what difference does it make, right? Anyway, once you're here, go around these mountains on the eastern side until you reach this town called Romoldo. Remember this guy in Cole? He told you that Romoldo was the place to buy keys. Well, here we are, so we can finally open some goddamn doors now. But we're not going to worry about that just yet. First, go to the weapon shop and buy the broadsword. Hmm. Broadsword. Isn't that a song by Jethro Tull? Bring me my I bet about two people are going to recognize that tune. Now, to buy the magic keys, you have to go over here where you entered and follow the moat, hugging the line exactly. You can't veer off or you'll leave the town. Go into this little shop on the corner and this old guy is the one that sells you the keys. Just buy as many as you can afford. Now go around and talk to everybody. Unlock this door in the inn and this old guy tells you that four steps south of the bath and coal is a magic item. Remember the lady in Cole mentioning the medicinal bath? That's the one. Just don't go there yet, but keep it on the back burner. Head outside and start leveling up outside the Ramolder area. At level 14, you'll learn the outside spell, which will simply teleport you to the entrance of the cave or dungeon you're in. This really comes in handy if you're lost or getting your ass kicked by stronger enemies. Continue leveling up outside of Ramolder until you reach 7,700 gold. Go back to Ramolder and buy the magic armor and stock up on the maximum number of keys you can hold, which is 6. Then go back outside of town and keep leveling up. When you reach level 13, you'll learn the return spell, which teleports you back to Tentacle Castle. This really helps to save your progress now that you're traveling great distances from the castle. Only thing is, the spell won't work when it's in a dungeon, so cast outside and then return if you're in that situation. Now, level 13, you're ready to save the princess. Go back through the swamp cave, head up, and turn this way. And when you get here, you'll be faced with the guardian of the princess and the first boss of the game, the green dragon. He's a lot stronger than the enemies you've been used to fighting lately, so definitely save your progress first. If you want to be on the safe side, wait until you're at level 14. The best bet against this douchebag is to put him to sleep and wail away at him with your trusty broadsword. Just keep attacking and healing yourself with herbs if your hit points end up in the 30s. He has a special attack, fire breathing, which can really kick your ass. After taking him out, you'll unlock this door and rescue the princess. She expresses her gratitude and all that, and you can then carry her back to the castle, but you might as well cast outside and then return. You bring her back to the king, for which he can breathe a sigh of relief, and Gwaylin gives you her love. And no, they don't bump uglies. That would be a little uncouth in an NES game, especially since her father is right there. No, the Goyland's love item will inform you how many experience points are necessary to reach the next level, and it also gives the counterparts of your current position from the castle. This will prove to be very useful later, trust me. Head back to the main floor of the castle and go through the locked door on the northeast side. Talk to everyone in the area, and if you for whatever reason don't have keys, you can buy some from this guy up here. But they're more expensive than a Romulda. 85 gold as opposed to 53 gold. Now over here is a magic floor which will take out 20 hit points for each step, so make sure you have over 40 hit points before you cross. Remember you have the magic armor so you can walk across and heal yourself if you have to. Across the danger zone and this knight will tell you that you need to push on a wall of darkness in Garenham and you'll find Garen's grave. That's important shit right there. The other knight will mention that he can't find the castle cellar. It's a good thing he doesn't cause there's an important item in there. 